What's up guys, Beaver Mash UK, Speed VR, with another video for you. Um, for people that know me from my older channel, I've had um, a number of VR headsets, ranging from the Rift, um, Vive Pro, HP Reverb, and now I've got the um, Oculus Quest 2 and the link cable. And the one problem I've had up until a few days ago is um, background images in sim racing, such as Automobilista 2, Project Cars 2, any, any sim basically, where distance visibility is important to you and the one problem I've had with using link uh, the link cable is background objects especially trees and things like that I've had like a smudge effect to them like they've got some sort of netting over them which has um, you know it's almost like it's like the headset is rendering everything up close to you at high resolution but everything in the background is a lower resolution and really compressed looking. And I was considering going back to the Rift S because obviously you don't have that problem with a fully fledged um, display port and USB dedicated headset. Because there's compression going on with the Oculus Quest and Quest 2, you know. There, you could see that the background objects were less of a priority to the headset, so they were being rendered at a low resolution. And it was quite distracting, because everything up front just looked like a mess. But you look down at your cockpit and it's like, okay now this is incredible, you know? No screen door effect, just sharp, colourful image. So, what I've been playing around with, because I've fixed it. I've solved the problem, okay, and I'm going to show you what I've, what I've been messing around with. So we'll start with the Oculus Quest screen, and as you can see, my graphic preferences is 80 hertz, and the slider is maxed out to 1.6x, okay, so he can't go any further. It's maxed out. And by the way, I'm running a 3090, so you know what I'm like. If I've got the best graphics card in the world, there's no way I'm skimping on settings. But you're probably asking yourself, well, why 80 hertz? Well, to me, I can't see a difference between 80 and 90 hertz. So I'd rather have the 10 frames back in the pot and up the settings in the game itself or the sim. If you're really sensitive to motion sickness, you'd probably want to be lowering your graphic settings in the game and targeting a constant 90 hertz. Okay, but that's just my preference. So 80 hertz, sliders fully maxed out. So that's all you do as far as the Oculus headset goes. So we'll get rid of that. Then obviously the cable and your motherboard or your expansion card, your USB free expansion part card comes into play here. Um, this is the cable I'm using. It's by a company called Nexigo. N-E-X-I-G-O. Let's bring this up. There you go. It's a 16 feet cable. Um, it is the lightest cable I've used on the Oculus Quest 2. Honest to God, when you've got your headset on your head, you don't even feel the cable. Now, coming from a, a, a HP Reverb or a Vive Pro or a Vive, you know what it's like when you've got a big, thick, horrible fucking cable dangling down the side of your neck, especially when you're sat in your rig. Um, but this thing here, it's, it's got like... Um, it's longer than usual because this here 
is a booster. It, it's like using a, uh, a cable extender, but they've built it into the cable itself. So you get no lag or latency, and it really does work. I'm getting 2.3 gigabits per second on my Asus motherboard um, and this cable, which is more than enough. So there's the cable. It's 29.99. That's the cable I recommend. I've had the original. I've had the official cable at 89.99, and it performed one. 0.1 gigabits per second less than this cable. You know, how outrageous is that? I was getting 2.2 gigabits per second in the same USB port on my PC, everything set up the same. I plug this cable in, I've got the same amount of length, and I'm getting 2.3. Sometimes, and I don't know why, I get 2.6 when I do a cable test. So I don't know, I don't know why that changes, but it's never gone lower than 2.3. And for 29.99, you cannot go wrong. I'll just quickly show you the thickness of the cable. Right, honestly, it is so light. Yeah, goes in on the side. You got a little. They give you this as well for hooking up to the side. Look at it. It's it's just it's so thin and light for the money. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. You you'll know what I mean when you when you buy it. It's um, it's very, very good. And the good thing is about Amazon. Um, if it doesn't work out for you, you just return it. You know what I mean? So you can't go wrong. So make sure you get a good cable. So that's the headset sorted. So now, the thing for me that, sort, that solved the issue with um, background images, you know, trees and stuff, looking really crap, was fixed by going into Oculus Tray Tool and applying the following settings. Okay, just sharpen that up a bit if I can. So some people have been saying you don't need Oculus Tray Tool anymore because all these settings are now redundant because of the 2.3 update on the Oculus software. The fact that link has come out of beta, you don't need to change these. But it's funny how I chose this setting. This is the highest setting you can choose in Oculus Tray Tool for link. And my problem disappeared. The background, the background, the far distant images are no longer smudged and look compressed. Everything, you know, it's not as sharp as what the cockpit looks, you know. But that smudginess, that horrible compressed look has disappeared. And uh, every time I start my PC now, Oculus Trade Tool sets this up for me. I put my headset on and it's just like using the Rift S, but with higher resolution. That's it. That is it now. This headset can now easily replace um, the Rift S. God, my camera's a bit crap today. Yeah, easily. You know, I, I was gonna keep it for my son to use when he comes over, um, you know, and I was gonna go out there and get a Rift S, considering you can pick one up for 299 now, because I sold my other one. I sold it a week before the price drop of £100, so I bet the guy on eBay is pissed off because I sold it for 250 So the Quest 2 has cost me 50 quid, and I've got mobile VR for downstairs uh, using virtual desktop, and I've got the onboard VR capability for downstairs, and then I come up here, plug in the cable, 
and I've got my dedicated VR for my sim racing. So those settings there have fixed the problem that I was having. So a combination of um, a decent graphics card, Oculus Tray Tool and a decent cable will fix anyone who's having the same issue that I had within sim racing. Elite Dangerous looks a lot better, the stars, everything. Um, I'm yet to try Microsoft Flight Sim, I'm going to try that later tonight. But uh, it's back to work tomorrow, so I'm all fucked off about that. But um, yeah, that's how you fix the problem. So you go, you go from having a background image smudging like that to like this, you know, nice and crisp. I'm just using my desktop uh, as, a, as an example. But, uh, but there you go. So try the settings, let me know what you think. And uh, if you've got any questions, put it in the comments and I'll answer it later.